vi ska börja med en annan utvandrarfilm där Karl Oskar heter Feivel och är en mus i det fattiga Ryssland. Och den som kommenderar filmen är filmskaparen själv som heter Don Bluth. To know the story of American Tale is to know simply that a little Russian family comes to the United States when it's just early America. And they come there thinking that they're going to get away from all of their problems, that in America all the streets have breadcrumbs on and all the, all the houses have cheese in them and that there are no cats in America. So one day, Papa Moskowitz, he takes his whole family and he gets on a boat and he goes to America. While they're on the boat, Fievel, his little son, gets so excited he wants to go up on board the boat and see the fish in the ocean. He's thrilled and you know, curious about this. He is washed overboard. I think that there are only two men which you can't ignore when you look upon the history of the 20th century. I think it's Sigmund Freud mm -hmm. and Walt Disney. Interesting, okay. <laughs> Sigmund Freud, why do, you, why do you put those two together? Because Sigmund Freud um, discovered or invented the subconsciousness uh -huh. and Walt Disney used it exploded it. You understand what I mean? Yes, I certainly do. Uh, you know, I, I would have to, I would have to agree with you. And, and I'll tell you why, and, and it's because what I know about animation is that it's a language of symbols. And, uh, and so it's a subconscious language. Oftentimes, what you're looking at when you see an animated film, you look at it on, on the conscious level but on the subconscious level you really don't know what you're looking at and the symbols are used to teach ideas or um, to teach principles and probably the viewer doesn't even know he's being taught it's really true i know that's very astute that you knew that <laughs> i i haven't found too many people that have interviewed that really are aware of that and uh, disney used some animation animation as propaganda against hitler and uh, it was very effective, very, very effective. Because it goes in, like you say, it goes into your mind, into your subconscious, and it does remain there. Those bright, colorful images and those characters there are very infectious, very contagious. Um, there are different kind of imaginations. There's one uh, fantasy that you use when you are going to solve a mathematic problem. Another which you use when you dream, another which turns on when you're drunk, mm -hmm. etc. Uh, what kind of imagination is it that you use when you uh, make an animated picture? I believe that some of it is intuitive. So I, I believe it comes from outside as, as much as anything and that all that an artist really is, and every artist is, is a conduit somehow for things to be born. And I don't know, you know, if this relates to it. I know that there was a period when they showed a lot of Disney films during the real heavy drug periods and they would show them so people could get high on drugs and go and look at the colors. It's kind of psychedelic yes. fantasies. Yes, yeah. I know this much about the colors of animation is that an animated picture is not as long as a regular picture. It's kept short on purpose because the color is very intense. And I know that because we are making a feature-length animated piece, I try and gray the colors down. So I don't use them right out of the tube as bright as they can be, because you would give your audience a headache. Mm. So they're much grayed down. And then I always have the capacity at certain moments, if I want the emotions to get really, you know, very abruptly shocked, to bring the color suddenly up the way an orchestra conductor would bring the orchestra to full um, what, to full volume. Pavel Moskowitz is a little innocent child who is clothed by the poorest of clothes, who's at the bottom of the family, who can't really take care of himself, and so therefore, a lot of the feelings that you and I might have about 
life are involved in that little figure right there, that little symbol. So we can identify with Fievel. Uh, are all the mice in uh, an American tale, uh, does they have um, uh, models in uh, yes. Tennyson or Yes, they do. They have a counterpart in real life. And they are generally people that I know. If you should draw a mouse uh, out of your own character, you served as a model yourself. Of myself? Yes. A mouse of myself? That's a hard assignment you've given me. Well, this, is, this has to do with what I know about myself. Okay, I know, first of all, that um, I'm not extra tall, so I'm going to say that, and, and I have a posture that is medium. I don't stand real puffed up, but I don't stand real slouched over either. So, I know that I'm, I'm considered kind of skinny, so I would draw a mouse and I have a large nose. So I would draw a mouse probably that has a very large nose. So that's there. I would draw a mouse that has great big eyes, and they're probably at half-mast, because my eyelids a lot of times are at half-mast. I draw a mouse that had fairly large ears, so I know that's there. I draw a mouse that um, has a fairly large Adam's apple here. I've got that. Now, I picture myself as being somewhat happy and successful, so the clothes would reflect that. So I think you'd, you'd, you'd pick up this, nice tie, and very broad shoulders mean I've got a lot on my shoulders right now. So you'd see this kind of a guy I hate high water pants, so I like them, and I have very long feet. So it'd be something like that. We will send it to, to your security. <laughs> <laughs> this more looks more like a rat, doesn't it? Au revoir, bonne chance, Lucas <laughs>